and welcome to the latest in our series of videos looking at how to create a simple game using stencil and in this video we are going to be focusing on actually creating a level for our game now you already need to make sure that you've imp incorporated and imported some graphics uh, in the last video we looked at how to import sprites that we've made to create a tile set so if you haven't seen that video and you don't have any graphics ready to go um, you might want to go back and look at the, that and then come back. So um, we're going to carry on and look at how to make a, a level and in stencil levels are called scenes so I'm on the dashboard as you, as you might be able to see and as always I can just click on, on that particular tab on the left hand side and it brings me into, into the scenes area and you can see at the moment I don't have any scenes at all so I'm going to click here to create one, I can either do it there all there let's go up here create new and then as usual there's the basics I give it a name the name of my level I'm going to just call it level one um, and you can change the width and the height etc of your level it's mine's 20 by 15 32 by 32 tiles you'll recall that's the graphic size we've been working with so so the sprites we've made should fit really nicely into that level and then we're going to click create when we're good to go so there's a little bit of a pause while the game sets that up while the stencil sets that up and then we should have a blank level that we can work in and so here we are here's the uh, blank level and you can see already first thing to note is that at the top you've got just like you have with all the other elements in game make in stencil sorry scene behaviors events physics atlases which we won't be looking at for the moment and properties on the right we have our tile set so these are the graphics that I've imported from the tile set that I've made before um, so I can use these in my game actors we're going to look at in a, in a, in a, in a video or so's time so we're, not gonna, we're just going to build the, a simple level for the moment um, and then you've got controls on the right on the left hand side here like you can you've got like a, a, a fill tool uh, and you can a pointer tool so you can select the elements in your level and again there's a there's a joints tool which we're going to look at later and the working mode allows you to toggle what you can see so tiles and actors is up at the moment but I can change it so I'm only working with tiles with actors with joints regions again we're not going to look at regions in this video uh, and down here you can see I can zoom in and zoom out I can also, if I want to, switch a grid on, and the grid might be quite useful, particularly if you have actually kind of done a proper level plan. The uh, the grid is, is is a useful thing to make sure that you what you've planned actually does fit properly in the uh, to make the level that you've actually had in mind when you when you did it. So let's just start working on, on the level that we're going to make, uh, and we're going to start by just building some simple. A simple maze level so I've got here one of my tiles is, is a brick tile I can just literally click on that and you'll notice straight away that my cursor allows me then to to, to fill in with a brick tile which I can put all around my level as a border like this I'm holding the mouse button down at the moment so I don't even have to click the separate ones I've gone slightly wrong there but that's fine because what I can do is if I click on the pointer I can actually select an individual uh, individual tile if I want to and then if I don't want it I can delete it so actually building your level is incredibly simple because all I need to do is put my graphics in the right place where I want them to be so this isn't going to be a particularly imaginative or interesting level but it's just going to show us kind of how levels work so I'm going to just make it almost like a maze a very simple maze obviously um, and then in a minute what we'll do is we'll try and make this a bit more interesting by, by putting a background on um, I'm going to put maybe a central area here just with that graphic in there so that's currently what my level looks like so not, not particularly interesting just give you a look at, at what the properties tab allows you to do it's, it's what we had when we started it just gives you the name and allow the size and allows you if you want to to change a the, the background color so I'm gonna go up at the moment I've got no color in there but if I wanted to I could have a gradient or solid color which I could choose from there 
Now I actually don't want the colour because I'm, I'm going to see why in a minute. So that's my that is basically a level built. And obviously what I would then need to do is populate that with the other elements that would go toward making up my game. So my actors, so my like a player, enemies, collectibles, all of those kind of things. Now I'm going to come back out into the dashboard for a second. Uh, you can now see on the dashboard that level one exists there with my scenes and there's a little number counter there on the left that shows I've created that as well. You, can, you might be able to see that backgrounds is also among the resources there. So if I click on the backgrounds tab, what I think we'll do is import a graphic that will work as a background just to make that level look a little bit more interesting. So as always, when there's nothing there, it tells you there's nothing there and it gives you the option to create one. So if I go click on uh, back, click here to create one, brings up the name box again and I'm going to call it um, Metal Floor because I've gone for a vaguely kind of sci-fi feel so I've got I've, I've already got a, a, a background in mind so I'm going to create and then it brings you to the background uh, tool first thing I'm going to do is just show you all this this part here talks about scroll speed and when you've got a little bit more used to working with, with stencil what you might want to start doing is incorporating scrolling backgrounds so backgrounds are actually bigger than the, the screen you're working on um, to give it a more interesting effect and certainly you'll see that used a lot in games particularly like video games obviously like Mario and, 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 and retro arcade games where you've got a background that scrolls to give changing scenery and things we're not going to do that but it, it's something which we'll, we'll look at doing maybe a bit later on what I do need is to put some graphics onto here to give me the background that I want so here it says as you can see click here to add frame and just like when I was creating my tiles I can choose an image so I'll click choose image and then I've actually created already or actually found a suitable graphic for mine and this is this is important you need to make sure that the size of your graphic for your background is correct for the size of the level that you're working on so I've got two graphics here um, and you can see this one if you hover I don't know if you can see but it's 640 by 480 so I know that that's the size of my actual level of my room so that when I fit that in into the into the level it's going to fit perfectly if you choose one that's the wrong size it's a different size you are going to have some problems so you can either make these yourself in a graphics program and you can just set the canvas up to be the right size or do a specific image search for a background of that size so that's what i did i just found looked for a 640 by 480 background and that's what i came up with so i'm going to click on floor uh, doesn't seem to oh there and I was going to say doesn't seem to come in but there it is and you can see it's kind of like got a little metal slightly 3D looking effect there so I'm going to add that and that's in backgrounds now that should have that will add that to my set of back there now it's got frames here because you could theoretically have an animated background just like we had some animated tiles but I'm I'm not going to have an animated floor um, it's also a very good idea to make sure that your but any background doesn't have a busy or over the top design so that it makes the sprites difficult to see as well you've got to remember it's a background so the last thing I'm going to do is attach to scene so if I get attached to scene I've already created my scene we just did that level one so I double click on there and import that into my game now what you might be wondering here there you go it fits perfectly which is good but you might already be wondering where my tiles have gone because now you can't see the tiles it's just plonked it over the top of the tiles well, that's where the layers tool down here comes into play so you can see here I've got two layers uh, the metal floor and layer nor underneath was the was the layer I was working on before that was the layer that I've used to put my tiles on so at the moment because this one is on the top it covers the layer underneath it's like making a, a collage uh, when you put layers on top of each other. It's exactly the same way that layers work in Photoshop and in Fireworks. So if I want one to be, if I want the floor to go underneath, I do what I did there, I just dragged it down. And now metal floor is the bottom layer and layer zero is the top layer. Yeah, and then 
that makes it a lot easier to see using the layers means you, it's very easy to control what goes on top of what and to, to set the appearance for any level that you design and you've also got as you can see these little up and down arrows here allow you to send the layer backwards and forwards so then the nearer to the top of the layers the more priority it has, has over the ones underneath so there is my layer there's my level it doesn't look too bad if I go test seam not much is going to happen but it'll at least give you an idea of what it looks like when it's playing in, in, in the game window um, and you can see whether what you've done looks good and how it works as a game so it does take quite a while to prepare so we're just going to have to hang on for a minute while it does that okay now I paused that video just because it was taking so, so long to compile but there you can see that's what our level looks like and it doesn't look too bad you can see my animated tiles in the middle the floor background looks quite effective uh, with my girder pack on top so that that will do just fine as the as a basic level for our maze style game so that's about it for this video we'll look at how to add events and things like that to a level later on uh, but in our next video we need to start adding more elements to this game so we're going to introduce the idea of actors so have fun creating your own levels and i'll see you in the next video